And here we are. Welcome to another episode of Taste of Europe. It's Jim and Judy. Hello. We just got back from a Baltic trip, uh, Copenhagen, uh, Norway, and St. Petersburg. Yep, and Bergen. Um, Definitely by far our favorite trip to date. Uh, Very, very blessed, very lucky to be able to see this part of the world. Um, Highly recommend this area to see the people, the food, the culture, everything about it was wonderful. And hopefully we'll uh, give you a few tips and uh, hopefully share the experiences we had there from a food standpoint on this show, maybe some of the cultural stuff. Uh, That's what we try to do in these videos. Uh, I think the... What would you say the biggest thing, the highlight about all the food is? How would you summarize it? Uh, I, definitely the fresh seafood, um, the game meat in some of the areas, the fresh fruits with the berries. Uh, definitely lots of cod, that's for sure. Yeah, you can uh, try. And salmon, and salmon. Yeah, salmon, and you can try reindeer and deer and... The steak in Norway is really yeah. good. Oh, yeah. And don't forget, in Very Russia, tender. you have, you know, uh, stroganoff uh, there. Yeah, definitely not like Americans beef stroganoff. Not at all. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think the other highlight in seafood is cod is cod. You can put whatever type of sauce you want on it, but it, it always is best, just in my opinion, as fish and chips. Yeah, I agree. I agree for sure. Well, Enjoy. Our first stop in the Baltic was Copenhagen, Denmark, a beautiful canal city. A city that you can see without renting a car at all. Um, You can Uber, um, you can take the metro, um, you can see half the city on bike. And uh, the best views, I think, personally, is on the water. You can catch a lot of beautiful views of the city. Um, being out on the water and uh, going on the boats down the canals. It's a lot like Amsterdam, uh, really beautiful canals, but it has its own special vibe. And on the food part, I think some of the foods were smorbrod. Yeah, and also um, lots of Danish pastries, um, seafoods. Salmon is a big one. Our first food stop in Copenhagen was at Puck Restaurant. It has traditional food in a historic area, and this restaurant has a lot of history to it. It's Copenhagen's third oldest restaurant from 1536. We opened up not as a restaurant, we actually opened up as a brewery making homemade beer. Oh, wow. Now, back in the 1500s, to be a restaurant, you needed one thing, a license. Uh Who gave out the licenses? Um... The king. The king. Okay. So four kings came here, they ate, they drank, they were very happy. They did say one thing though, this establishment will never ever be a restaurant. The reason why? Back in the 1500s you could not take a lady or a queen to a public house. And the kings of Denmark did not want to come to their local pub with their wives. Uh-huh. They actually came here with another type of girl. Yeah. Okay. Now I won't say what type of girl it was, but it was not their sister or their mother. Yeah. <laughs> Now, just upstairs, there's a very famous young lady. Her name was Storlet Katrine, which actually means Katrina in the boots. Now, she had little boots and up to here. And she was actually a very good friend of the King of Denmark. They say the King came three times a day to the restaurant days. Now, 1739, 203 years after we opened, New King of Denmark, times have changed. It's now Christian VIII. Now, we like to call Christian the Mad King. He loved to spend money. Now, he marries an English princess called Caroline Matilda. Now, Caroline Matilda did not want to come to Copenhagen. Why? She didn't fancy the Danish weather. And I'm like, English weather, Danish weather? Same practice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We usually have nine days of summer. This is except- exceptional yeah, weather yeah, yeah. at the moment. Yeah. So she comes to Copenhagen, and what does she do? She has an affair with the king's best friend. 
So now all of a sudden the Queen of Denmark needs somewhere to eat and drink. She can't come here because we're a pub, so what does she do? She gives me my license, making me the third oldest restaurant in Denmark. Even though unofficially and legally I've been serving kings, ladies of the night, food and alcohol for over 200 years. Now the actual inside of the building is from the 1500s. All the woodwork you can see is from back then. The outside of the restaurant, however, is from the 1700s. And you think, how can the outside be older, younger than the inside? It's because there was a big fire across the road at the palace. The palace burnt down. The fire jumped over the water, burnt down the outside. The firemen came running and thought, well, we can't save the palace where the king lives, but we can save the brewery. So they managed to put the fire out. So the building was rebuilt in the 1700s, a new front was put on, and in the 17, late 1700s, they put the four beams on here to make it look a little bit more fancy and more. Danish meatballs. Salmon. <laughs> okay, in Denmark you have to try a typical Danish pastry. So, so this is the very traditional one. I can't say the name. really good. Well, gotta get Danish pastry in Denmark. A s'more bread in Copenhagen. S'more bread, this is the roast beef s'more bread. And what do you have, Judy? Um, the meatballs. Judy's gonna give it a try here. These are Danish meatballs. So. What you think? Delicious. It's got some potato salad on top too. Yeah. Potato salad, meatball. Over here, she's got some roast beef, got some fried onions on there, and pickle. And then we uh, flew to Norway, and uh, we went ahead and we started in Bergen, which is in the west coast area of Norway. Uh, we did Norway in a nutshell, which is a train and ferry voyage, all in one day. And then after that, we headed to the capital of Norway, which is Oslo. Yep, land of the Vikings, and we did our traveling on water and traveled some of the same fjords, probably some of the uh, medieval... Vikings traveled on. You really got to go get into nature and outdoors and you need to try and travel in the summer to Norway because it's the best time to go. Yeah, the best thing about Bergen is you can get fresh seafood right off the boats. They have a big seafood market there, so you can get anything prepared any way the way you like it, and it's totally fresh. You can buy some fresh berries. Um, those are they're sweeter there in Norway because of the shorter uh, growth season. Um, also, they have a lot of game meat at the market. They have reindeer, deer, all types of beef jerky. And cod is really important. Uh, historically, the Hanseatic League, the Germanic group of traders, controlled cod and fed all of Western Europe for hundreds of years with the cod that came through Bergen. Mushy peas, and uh, I got uh, reindeer here, reindeer meat. So looks like it's got some red berries on it and sauce as well. Mm -hmm. 
It's gaming. It's, it's a little gaming, but it's really, really good. Okay, so we're here in uh, Bergen, Norway, picking up some a reindeer burger. And Judy's eating a codfish sandwich. Very fresh from here. Mm -hmm. um, fried onions and cucumbers. Oh, it's delicious. It's, and and um, the reindeer here is only allowed to be farmed by the Sami people in the northern part of Norway. <laughs> you can give that a bite there. Mm -hmm. We've already been kind of munching on this, so. Prices are high here, very high here in Norway, so anytime you can get street food, it can be a real treat, and there's some really good food here. Sitting right here, having a nice little picnic right on the harbor here. Really good, really fresh meat. And for those alcohol connoisseurs, you may want to give some Scandinavian gin a try, or as they call it, Geneva. Okay, so here we are at uh, Roar Bua in Oslo, Norway. Very traditional foods here. What we have here is mink whale, deer, beef, and reindeer steak. So we're going to give that a go. Judy's trying the Norwegian tenderloin. They're actually famous here for their steaks as well. Grilled big boiled potatoes and grilled vegetables up there. Here's the sauce, Jim. Okay. All right, so the reindeer was very good, very tender. This is the mink whale. The mink whale. Very tender. Tastes a lot like if you marinated um, really good beef in some seafood. <laughs> Here we are at Lofostua, and we're both having some cod here. I'm having the cod special, and Judy's having cod warbu. Mm -hmm. Yours has paprika and mine It's mine basic, doesn't. basically uh, lightly breaded, um, pan fried with a sauce on it. Cream sauce. With a cream sauce. Give it a try, Judy. Okay. Scrumptious. Mm. Cod is very traditional in Norway. Mm. You really need to try cod in Norway. Then it was over to the land of the Tsars, to St. Petersburg, Russia, where Peter the Great built his 18th century city on the backs of thousands of slaves and serfs. And also, St. Petersburg is, I would say, the Venice of the North, because there's so, hundreds of bridges there and uh, different canals. Again, you can get on the water and... and go under the canals and see the city from the view of the water. Endless amount of palaces, czar palaces, so much artwork, and it's just the cultural hub of Russia. The food 
in St. Petersburg is delicious. Uh, they have the borscht, uh, which is a soup. They have delicious dumplings, and they have more stroganoff. Definitely not like the stroganoff here in America. And lots of vodka. Of course, when we first arrived, we had to rush right over to the highly rated stroganoff house right there in St. Petersburg. Right there. Delicious. Okay, this is Bartika. This is a throwback restaurant. It has a lot of Russian comfort food in St. Petersburg. It's styled in a Cold War era style and features a lot of comfort food and decorated in 1950s Cold War style. Let's check it out. And meat pie. Pretty traditional. Judy's gonna give it a try here. Let's see. What you think? Okay, so here we have traditional borscht with beef, which is uh Beet soup with sour cream. This is navy beans with minced meat. Let's not forget potato pancakes, traditional potato pancakes. Round out the meal. Okay, this is a traditional Russian honey cake. We are at uh, the Russian Vodka Museum restaurant. Uh, notice it's oh like a multi-layer cake. What's it taste like, Judy? Ooh. What do you think? Um, we can definitely taste the honey, and I think that's like cream cheese in there. I don't think there's any alcohol in it. When you're visiting Russia, of course you have to try vodka. Vodka is always grain vodka here, not potato vodka like you think. And it's drank straight in shots and usually followed up with some type of food. In St. Petersburg is the great uh, Russian Vodka Museum and I really encourage you to take a tour. It's from left hand, it's uh, vodka from the city of Arkhangelsk. It's very north part of Russia. It's classic vodka without any flavor. In the middle, the same brand, some distillery, but this flavored vodka with juniper berries. And right one infusion uh, from Zubrovka grass, it's bison grass. Okay. And you start from left hand and finish to the right. And please, not to see, drink in one cup, one shot, and don't forget your snack. Okay. And of course, traditional Russian toast, Zazdarovia. It means Zazdarov to your cup. Sazdarovia. Yes, correct. Great, thank you. Thank you. That's a borscht. Traditional Russian soup with a beetroot and also beef 
carrot, potatoes, and herbs. We serve borscht with sour cream, this white thing. Sour cream you can put on the borscht or not, that's for your wish. And also with lard. Lard we don't put on the soup. We are eating it with the bread. <laughs> and in Russia we're eating a lot, um, a lot because it helps you then you drink vodka to so not be very drunk. Uh, also, bread basket uh, goes with smalls. Uh, in Germany they call it schmaltz, in France, sandu. That's a burnt lard with garlic, salt, pepper and herbs. It's like our version of butter. Thank you very much. And like that, in uh, cooking at sour cream with a, a sauce demi-glace with a, um, mushrooms and cucumbers. Mm -hmm. And also served with uh, mashed potatoes. Peace. Dessert with Siabak cream cream. Here we got three layers. First is a milk mousse. The second one is a yellow berry cream. And the third one is crumble of cookies. Also we put inside the smoke of this wood. And that's the three layers. Mm. And that's a strawberry uh, sorbet goes with a ice uh, with a berries cranberry and decorated by lemon meringue. Here we are, last evening in St. Petersburg. Time to leave the Baltic behind. Uh, we've enjoyed some really good food from Copenhagen to Norway to St. Petersburg. Yes, very, very fortunate, very lucky. Um, Definitely the beef stroganoff, the potato cakes, uh, meat pie, honey cake. Uh, what From else? reindeer right. to salmon. To whale. <laughs> We've Mickey. really uh, tried it all. Yeah. Dasvidanya. Right.